Hello student. So let's try to solve one more problem from just uh, examination. And this is one of the very fundamental and very conceptual problem to understand the area under the phase curve or the time evolution of area under the phase curve. And this problem was asked in just 2018. And this is question number 10. So what is this particular problem? So we have dq upon dt is equal to p, where q is generalized coordinate and p is generalized momentum. And similarly, we have dp upon dt is equal to minus 3q minus 4p. So these is two first order differential equation is given in term of generalized coordinate and generalized momentum. And we have to verify how the phase area after some time t will be varied with the initial phase at some time t is equal to 0, at initial time t is equal to 0. So we have to see how the phase area is changing there. So if we will see this two equation carefully and we just want to write it in a form of Q, then this differential equation, we can just put dq upon dt as p here. So this differential equation is t square q upon dt square plus 4 dq upon dt plus 3q is equal to 0. So this is our differential equation. And if we will see this differential equation very carefully, then this is just like as a damped oscillation with some damping constant 4 and the oscillation that uh, a normal oscillation is 3. So this is just uh, a damping kind of thing. You can, you can take mass is equal to 1 unit or something like this. So if we have this damping coefficient 4, we can intuitionally say that this area under the phase curve will vary something like exponentially to the power minus 40. But this is not a correct way to solve this problem. You can just guess it and for examination purpose, this can be a okay, but you have to go much deeper into this particular problem. And this is wonderful problem. Let's try to go for this. So what we have, we have a generalized coordinate Q and how this Q is varying with the time. This Q is going to vary with the time dQ is equal to Q. We can take only for the one dimensional case. So I am not using I unnecessary. So QT is equal to Q plus Q dot DT. I can write this thing next. If you want to go for next level, you can go for Q double dot DT square. Similarly, I can go for PT and this will be P and that is P dot DT. So any time evolution can any a physical quantity or any coordinate under the phase curve Q and P is evolving with, the, with the, this manner as a time. So now I just want to see how this infinitesimal change in generalized coordinate and generalized momentum is varying. So if we are going to write this particular thing, then we have dqt is equal to dq plus we have del q dot del q dq dt. And similarly, we can have dpt is equal to dp plus del p dot upon del p dp dt. Now what we are going to do, we are just going to multiply these two things because we have to talk about the phase area and phase area is nothing but dq into dp. Very small phase area we are just talking about. If we know about the very small phase area, then we can easily analyze about the complete phase area for this particular time. And we are just talking about the time dt. So if we are going to multiply it and for if we can assume dt is very small, then we can go up to first order up to, of the dt. So what is this particular thing? We have dqt into dpt is equal to dq dp. So this two is going to multiply. For the first order, this is going to multiply with this one and this is going to multiply with this one. Another term will be second order d square upon dt square. So we are d square t is there. So we are just avoiding this thing. So cross term is there. So what is your cross term? 
your cross term is dq dp and this is going to multiply with this one so we have dp dot upon dp and this is going to multiply with this one so we have dq dp del q dot upon del q and we are just going to multiply with t so now you can see it clearly so what you can do you can just take this dq dp common and this is at the initial time this is after time evolution so we have dqt into dpt is equal to dq dp and in the bracket this is 1 plus del q dot upon del q plus del p dot upon del p into dt and order of d square t we are just going to neglect so we are just going to neglect so this is our variation of phase area after time t with initial phase and if we know this particular thing, we can easily use this particular thing. So we can write basically from here dqt upon dt upon dq dp. Sorry. So this will be dpt actually. And this value is equal to 1 plus del q dot upon del q plus del p dot upon del p into dt. So we can remove this part. So this we have just discussed this one. Now from here, we can dq dot upon q is equal to 0. So dq dot upon q, we, so this is your q dot, so q dot is equal to p so if we are going to differentiate it then this term is zero so we have dqt dpt upon dq dp and this will equal to one plus the first term is zero and we can also remove this one so what we have del q dot upon del q first term is 0 and we have del p dot upon del p so this is del p dot upon del p so this is p dot so we have this p dot is equal to minus 3q minus 4p so del p dot upon del p is nothing but minus 4 and dt so if we can see this particular thing for the infinitesimal phase volume ratio with the initial time then what we have we have dqt dpt upon dq dp is equal to 1 minus 4 dt and if you can see this particular term this is nothing but the taylor expansion of this is nothing but the Taylor expansion of exponential. So this is nothing but the Taylor exponential minus 4 dt. This is the first up to first term of Taylor expansion. Now we are just talking about infinitesimal phase area. If we are talking about the complete phase area, then this at upon initial phase a must be equal to then this dt will transform into exponential minus 4t so your answer is exponential minus 4t so this will vary with the exponential minus 4t and this 4 is exactly this number and hence we have identified this is damped oscillation so this minus sign is very trivial but you can use this thing in any type of problem if you have relationship between q dot versus q and p dot versus p so i request you just try to do this problem for the harmonic oscillator and you will find for the harmonic oscillator at upon a0 
is equal to 1. So this is beautiful thing. So there the phase area is conserved. But here you will see the phase area is exponentially decreasing with the time with the constant 4 and which can be associated with the damping constant. So this is wonderful problem. Try to do with yourself and try to figure it out this type of problem for your just examination. Thank you.